My name is Deirdre Tobias, and I'm the current academic editor for the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Um, we are interviewing as part of the Meet the Editor session, Dr. Kevin Klatt, who is the recipient of the inaugural Dennis Beer Young Career Editor for the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. So welcome, Kevin. Um, you are a postdoc fellow at Baylor College of Medicine. Um, but what else do we, what else would you like to tell us about yourself? Oh, uh, well, I'm a, mainly a nutrition scientist, I guess, is my identity, but I'm also a, a registered dietitian. Um, I like to do a lot of yoga, <laughs> especially in quarantine. Um, and I guess my, my interests generally lie in using sort of a translational approach to, um, dissecting both nutrient needs and understanding nutrient metabolism better. Uh, so using preclinical cell and animal models and then doing a little bit of human feeding and intervention studies. So what first drew you into the field of nutrition? I got into nutrition in high school um, and I was interested in just like weight loss and in general kind of saw the extremely divergent perspectives on a number of topics in nutrition and was a little bit drawn to kind of why there was so much zeal and fervor for all of these different perspectives on all these different topics. Um, and just kind of, you know, piqued my natural curiosity to understand the methods. You know, you start off reading all the conclusions and understand that everyone's coming to different conclusions and slowly get your way into uh, understanding the methods more. And that sort of synergized with when I went to college and started taking more college classes. So. Um, you know, it started with my own, like, personal interest in losing weight at the time, but quickly evolved into just, like, curiosity about why people have such strong feelings about things. Great. So we're going to shift gears somewhat. Um, here we are in the midst of a pandemic. Um, does the current health crisis have any impact on your perspective of research, how it's conducted or interpreted, disseminated? Can you speak oh, to that? Yeah. I mean, I guess from macro and micro scales, it makes me think about my own research and be like, does this matter? <laughs> and how much does it matter? And should we be shifting our gears as like a greater community to think about, you know, uh, things that have more direct outputs? And then, you know, you get lost in dose response relationships and how our studies impact DRIs and things that have far reaching effects, but, you know, they're many steps away from seeing the impact and at times right now like during an infectious disease pandemic you, you kind of think about all right how could I see more immediate impacts to my research um, but I think overall I think it makes us think a lot about how we handle uncertainty in general I mean, we have uncertainty about you know even what case fatality rates are and then we have uncertainty about how to treat and we get even more uncertainty about the role of diet in any of these things um, that kind of makes me about how we handle that, how we communicate that. Um, so your new position was envisioned in part to bring AJCN's nutrition science to a new audience, but also to bring um, some, I guess, more exciting ways of disseminating the research to our, our usual or typical um, base. Um, so I'm guessing you have some ideas in the works for what this role in your activities might look like over the next few years. Are there any that you're ready to share? Um, I, I think we're going to do a podcast. I think that's pretty, pretty well established. So I think I know it's definitely going to happen. <laughs> um, but I think I would like to kind of produce something particularly that kind of serves as something that can get the whole community, particularly in times of a quarantine, talking and chatting and thinking and sort of bring together people who might be siloed in the field and start getting think about talking and maybe collaborating and moving the field forward. And I think a weekly, monthly podcast, you know, that people all can tune into and chat about um, would be great. So related to that, if you could interview or co-host with anyone um, dead or alive, who would your dream podcast interviewee be? Elsie Widdison. Okay. And why? Uh, I think she was a major pioneer in the field and I think really served to bring the more applied dietetic side and the more food science side and the nutrition side all kind of together into one. She did a lot of work in um, 
you know, making food composition tables, particularly around wartime. And, you know, as we, we think about pandemics and needing to respond and make nutrition relevant, I think she certainly did that. But she's just sort of an icon in the field. You look, you think back to that time when we knew so little about food and the discovery that you could do. Um, I would just love to hear her thoughts and perspectives of her career. She's always been somebody I've kind of looked up to. So this role is named for AJCN's previous editor-in-chief, Dennis Beer. Um, does this connection or person have any special meaning for you? <laughs> well, I happen to be a postdoc at the USDA Children's Nutrition Research Center that uh, Denny Beer is the, the head of. So it, there was, I don't believe there was any nepotism involved. Uh, I've only met no. Denny a couple times, actually. But uh, yeah, I think Denny, I've... Um, watched in the literature as somebody who, you know, I, I think I was probably first introduced to him as a student when he gave um, one of the Outwater lectures. I think it was an Outwater lecture at ASN uh, at one of the nutrition conferences. Might have been EB back at that time. But um, just kind of taking a really, telling us to all think really critically about the interpretation of the studies and not jumping to causal inference when our study designs don't allow for it and pushing us to have better methods in the field. Um, that's something that always comes up over and over again is how do we improve our methods and make sure that we're both not uh, digging ourselves into a nihilistic you know, pit where we can't act on anything, but also keeping in mind and keeping us humble about what decisions we can't make and how aggressively we try to make them. So I guess finally, what's your philosophy towards science communication, specifically related to the field of nutrition, which has its own set of um, hurdles to jump in, in communicating results from a lot of its um, publications? I think my philosophy has kind of naturally evolved a little bit over time and has more settled on kind of thinking of taking some of the more immediate science and making sure that I communicate the methods of how we've learned what we think we've learned and that and contextualizing that into the greater body of evidence. And I think my audience more I think of is uh, you know, dietitians and clinicians who are more working out on the front line. So my, my approach to science communication then I guess is to make the primary research a little bit more accessible to the folks who are going to interact sort of on the ground more with uh, patients and clients that uh, make sure that they're getting right information that way. So I guess I, I try to amplify a message to the amplifiers uh, and not really put myself as the person. I don't, I don't think people follow my Twitter and try and change their own personal diet from it necessarily, but I do try and keep um, you know, an interaction with both journalists and other clinicians to see, you know, communicate that, that evidence and help them amplify the right message to their patients and clients.